In this video, we are doing a deep dive into the world of truffles, which at upwards of $1,000 per pound for black winter truffles and over $3,000 per pound for white truffles, these are easily one of the most expensive ingredients in the world. But if you're like me, I've always wondered, are fresh truffles actually worth it? So over the past couple of weeks, I spent close to $1,000 on various truffles and truffle products and ran them through six different experiments in an attempt to answer every question I could possibly think of when it comes to truffles. And by the end of this video, I promise you'll have an answer to these three questions. One, are black truffles worth it? Two, are the more expensive white truffles worth it? And three, are there any good substitutes like the oil for fresh truffles? And everything I learned in this video was not only interesting, but some of it was shocking. For example, did you know that fresh white truffles do not taste like fresh black truffles? They actually have fundamentally different aroma profiles and side by side, the fragrance is quite different. But it gets even more confusing when we get to truffle products. For example, there are some truffle oils, pastes, and powders that have black truffles on the label, but these products are actually mimicking the smell of white truffles. And this melted my brain. There is so much confusion when it comes to fresh truffles versus truffle products, but today that starts to change. So to begin our truffle journey, let's answer why are truffles so expensive in the first place? But first, thank you to today's sponsor, Maiden, who makes some of my absolute favorite pans you'll see in this video. Maiden designs professional quality products for the home cook, and specifically, I want to talk about the stainless clad collection. Their premium five ply stainless steel material is what sets it apart from other pans out there. The five layers allow for superior heat retention, even heating and ease of heat control. If I had to pick just one to get, my favorite is the stainless steel saucier. This is my go-to pot for one pot pastas and today I used it for making the risotto. It has curved edges and is just a perfect size. And I also use this for any sauce based dish like chicken tinga. So head to the link in my description to save on your order and thank you Made In for sponsoring this video. But now sit back, relax, and let's go underground. Truffles are an edible fungus from the tuber species that grow at the base of living trees. However, many people assume they are some type of mushroom, but that's actually not the case. They are different in two key ways. First, truffles fruit underground into a ball-like shape, and this is unlike mushrooms, which fruit above the ground into an edible stem and cap. And secondly, truffles live in a symbiotic relationship with living trees, and they do this by extending a tree roots network. Mushrooms and most fungi, on the other hand, feed on and decompose decaying trees. And in this case, the underground truffles pass on water and nutrients to the tree in exchange for carbs and sugars in the soil. And this is what turns truffles into a dense and aromatic fruiting body. And because they are underground, they've evolved to be highly aromatic so they can be found by animals such as pigs and dogs. And the truffle is the reproductive fruiting body of the fungus and it's full of spores that are waiting to be distributed throughout the forest or in our case to our mouths. And this is what we see in that gorgeous cross section. And today, there are actually over 30 species of truffles that are commercially traded. However, all truffles are not created equally. Truffles can vary quite a bit in terms of texture, color, and aroma. And in fact, some truffles are completely odorless, which is a far cry from some of the most popular ones. The two most popular ones tend to be the Black Winter Truffle or Tuber Melanosporum, which this 22 gram truffle cost me $58. And even more sought after is the White Truffle or Tuber Magnetum. This single 20 gram truffle cost me $153 or over $3,000 per pound. So why are white truffles over three times the price? Well, there's more than just one reason, and we'll get into those, but one of the reasons that truffles in general are so expensive is probably something you've heard about, and that is truffles are really hard to reproduce on the farm. Why exactly? Well, truffles are usually native to regions with lots of limestone in the soil, and this makes for a super high pH or basic growing environment. And this is why you find naturally incurring truffles in European regions like Spain, France, or Italy. They happen to have the right type of soil for wild edible truffles to occur. 
Now, even if you start in the right environment, as is beginning to happen in Spain and experimentally in the US with certain black truffle varieties, farming truffles is still very tricky. People try to farm truffles by inoculating the right soil near the right trees with the truffle spores, but there's still a big problem. And that is you have to wait a really long time. Depending on the species, truffles can take six to 10 years to fruit. So it might take a decade to find out if you have successfully inoculated the tree roots, meaning it's a really slow feedback cycle to adjust your techniques and become profitable. So until agriculture engineering can figure it out, truffles are going to remain really expensive. Now, the thing I've been wondering about for years is, are people obsessed with truffles because they are scarce, expensive, and have this almost mystical aura around how they are grown and harvested, or do they actually just taste really freaking good? So let's unpack this by answering this question. From a food science perspective, what is the flavor of of truffles. And this is the section that forced me to forget what I thought I knew about how truffles work. At a high level, these six properties make up the flavor of food, taste, aroma, texture, physical reaction, sight, and the human element. And when it comes to using fresh truffles in our cooking, it's best to primarily think of them as an herb, spice, or aromatic vegetable. Things like adding fresh basil to your pizza, using vanilla in ice cream, sauteing some fresh garlic, or adding freshly saved truffle to your pasta all have one thing in common. We are adding them to provide aroma, or simply put, to make our food smell better. So what do truffles smell like? Well, based on a lot of the truffle flavored foods and products, you may think that black and white truffles smell pretty similar and could be considered as a substitute for each other. But as I found out, that's actually not the case. So I grabbed out the truffles to get some B-roll of the white and black ones side by side for the first time. And I gave them a sip and was like, wait, the white truffle smells like the truffle oil and the black truffle paste, but the fresh black truffle smells really good, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't smell like the white truffle, and it also doesn't smell like this truffle oil or black truffle paste. And this is the first time I've sliced and cooked with my own truffle, so I had this moment where I was like, why doesn't this smell like I think it should? Is it a fake or something? I didn't, I got a real winter black truffle or tuber melanosporum from Europe, but this is where I realized we've kind of been misdirected for years with a lot of the truffle products that are out there. Now we need to nerd out a little bit and talk about some sciencey terms, but I promise this will all make sense. So if you've ever had anything truffle flavored, a truffle oil or truffle paste, the most common synthetic flavor ingredient added to it is 2,4-dithia pentane. So why is 2,4-dithia pentane so important? Well, if you take a look at this table from an overview on truffle aromas published in December 2020, across the top are 10 different varieties of truffles, seven black and three white. And down the side, there are 137 individual volatile organic compounds that have been identified in these various truffles. Now, as we learned in the vanilla video from last year, there can be hundreds of aroma compounds in a single vanilla bean but there's one compound that is stronger than all the rest in a higher concentration, and that is vanillin. Vanillin is the compound that we primarily identify as the smell of vanilla, and it's also the compound that is synthetically made and added to imitation vanilla. So hopefully you can see where we're going. You're probably thinking, oh, that 2,4-dithapentane is probably the key aroma molecule in all truffles then, right? Well, if we go to the table, we can see that 2,4-dithiapentane's odor description is sulfuric garlic. And if we go to the white truffle, or tuber magnetum, the most prized one, we can see that 67 to 83 of the relative area percentage is made up of 2,4-dithiapentane. Chemically, it's the same structure as the one added to many truffle oils and truffle products. But if we scroll across to the black truffles and look at tuber melanosporum, here's the kicker. Winter black truffles, or any variety of these black truffles in the table, do not have 2,4-dithiapentane in them. And what I found out is that most truffle products are actually made from summer black truffles, or tuber astivum. And the funny part about this is, these black truffles are essentially odorless. As noted from the Truffle Hunter, these truffles are harvested in massive quantities in the summer across Europe and the Near East. And this is the truffle that keeps the industry afloat. Any packaged product using truffle is likely using this one, and it also looks exactly like people think a truffle should look like. 
but what it lacks is aroma. Now, because it lacks aroma, it's mixed with flavoring, as you'll see on the label for various truffle products. And this is likely made up of a couple aroma compounds, but the primary one is going to be 2,4-dithia pentane. Now, some truffle products may specifically call out black truffle oil concentrate as an ingredient, and in this case, it definitely doesn't smell like white truffles. But as far as I can tell, based on the products I got, if you see a generic listing on the ingredient label of flavoring, truffle flavoring, or truffle flavor, this is likely made with a high concentration of the sulfuric and garlicky smelling 2,4-dithia pentane. Even if it's made with summer black truffles, it's actually mimicking the main aroma compound of the prize tuber magnetum. Or to sum this all up, most black truffle products are likely flavored with the aroma of white truffles. And I wish you could smell these in person with me because it still blows my mind. But now you're probably wondering, if winter black truffles don't have 70% of the 2,4-dithia pentane, meaning they don't smell like white truffles, then what do they smell like? Well, if you're someone who doesn't like the strong odor of white truffles, you may love the earthy, mushroomy warmth of winter black ones. Black winter truffle is so much more like earthy and like tobacco-y and, and definitely much more subtle versus kind of the top fresher piercing note that you get in the uh, white truffle. Very, very interesting. And I always assumed is that these are basically just kind of the same, but that's really not the case. So if you look at this table in detail, Unlike white truffles, there's not an overly dominant aroma compound, and they can vary from truffle to truffle. And I love this fragrance description from the Truffle Hunter. Deep earth and forest floor, drenched in cocoa and tobacco, layers of dried tobacco, sorghum, and cured olives slowly unfold. Not piercing like white truffles, it warms you like an old friend. And again, compare that to the aroma descriptor of the white truffle. Intense aroma of garlic, fried cheese, and gym socks. Like a subterranean trattoria where sweaty chefs have been laboring over deliciousness for hours. So now, I think the question we all want to know is this. Can the cheap truffle oil replace the flavor of fresh white truffles? Okay, let's pause for a second because that was a ton of information to digest. Remember, these are the three questions we are trying to answer. Can we answer them yet? No, that's why the rest of this video is focused on testing and practical applications. But what we did just learn is important because we now have the needed context to be able to evaluate these questions much better. And here are the key things that you need to keep in mind for the rest of this video. First, winter and autumn black truffles have a different aroma profile than white truffles. They are more subtle, earthy, forest floor, and tobacco-like. And secondly, most fresh black truffle varieties, such as summer black truffles, are completely lacking in aroma. Next, 2,4-dithia pentane is the dominant aroma compound in tuber magnetum, which provides a sulfuric garlicky aroma. And this is the compound most of us identify as truffle, but this compound is not in black truffles. And lastly, most truffle products are going to be made with black summer truffles with a flavor concentrated in 2,4-dithia pentane. So keep these observations in mind and let's hop into the testing. And for me, this is where things get really fun. These tests are split into two portions. The first three will be only using fresh black truffles and the second three will be focused on truffle substitutes. So let's dive in. When it comes to using truffles at home, I have three questions that I wanted to answer. One, are truffles better shaved or grated? Two, is it better to use truffles as a garnish only or can you cook with them? And three, what is the optimal ratio of fresh truffles to use in a pasta sauce? And all three answers will help you get the most out of your truffles. So let's go into test number one. If you are out at a restaurant or watch a video of someone using fresh truffles, they are almost always being shaved into light little pieces. Now, in terms of sight, these look absolutely beautiful on your plate, but more importantly, the super thin shavings are damaging the cells in the truffle, which exposes the volatile aroma compounds that are awaiting our nose for enjoyment. And the idea is that the thinner the truffle shaving, the more cells are damaged, the more aroma compounds are released. 
But if I'm already spending 60 to $70 on a single truffle, do I really need to spend another 35 to $50 on some specialty truffle shaver that I'll probably never use again? Or can I use something I already have like a knife or microplane grater? Well, I bought one of those truffle shavers to find out and here's my observation. The truffle shaver gets thinner slices than can be achieved with a standard chef's knife. Now, a super thin blade and a sharp knife can get thin slices, but truffles are kind of awkward to slice unless you square off a section, which would be wasting some of your truffles. So what I actually decided to use for this test is the microplane. And in theory, the microplane or grated truffles should release even more aroma compounds than the single shavings. Remember, the more cells that are damaged, the more aroma compounds will be released. So with grating the truffles, the microplane is essentially creating a row of eight teeny tiny slices of the truffles. And this is a concept I've tested in my onion cutting video. And it's actually crazy how big a difference it made when I rough diced the same amount of onions versus a finely minced one. So does this concept hold up for truffles? Let's see. For this test, I made some cacio e truffle instead of cacio e pepe. I followed the method that I showed in my cacio e pepe video by making the sauce ahead of time with a corn starch gel. And this gel is blended together with some Parmigiano Reggiano and olive oil, where it can be then stored in the fridge and ready for use. To assemble, I cooked some spaghetti until al dente, then added it to a pan along with a cheese cornstarch mixture and some pasta water. I mixed the two together to form a nice cohesive sauce and then separated it into two bowls for serving. To each bowl, I added exactly one gram of fresh truffle. Of course, one being shaved and one being grated. That's way easier. Holy smokes, that's way easier. And before I even got to tasting the pasta, I already had my answer to this first question. Okay, so I did one gram of truffle each, grated versus the sliced. And right away, I'll tell you, regardless of how these taste, I'm just gonna point out this was so much easier to use, the microplane grater. Just quickly do a little grating, it works so much better. I actually kind of messed up the first several slices with this, kind of stressing out a little bit, not gonna lie, because, yeah, I mean, it feels like you're kind of wasting it. I'll, I'll go ahead and use these, because we have a lot more tests to do. Um, but yeah, I will just say plus one on the, the microplane grater. So let's get into these. The waiter at the fancy restaurant has practiced this several times, but if you're buying a truffle to use at home, you kind of only get one shot. So I would enjoy the beauty of the truffle when you first cut into it and look at the cross section, but then go for the grater to release the flavor, which as I found out, both taste amazing, but the grated truffles are definitely a bump up in flavor. Mm-mm. This is the first dish I've had using these truffles. So I don't really know how to describe them, but my tongue is just absolutely salivating with that first one. Oh my gosh. And it's not as strong as you would think. I, I will say that. All right, let's go for the grated. Smells a little bit more fragrant to me. Oh yeah. There's definitely some bump up in flavor on this one. I don't know why this is so good. It's, it's not like a crazy strong flavor, like truffle flavored products that I've had. Like I've had truffle fries out before. I've had like truffle chips before. And they have a very distinctive like truffle flavor. This is nothing like that, but it is insanely addictive. Does it look as sexy? No, but I gotta say 1000%, I think micrograding is the way to go here. I am very, very interested now to see how this type of pasta is gonna stack up to some of the like truffle byproducts, the oils, the salts that I got, because I think they're gonna be really different and I think it's gonna be very, very interesting. So let's break these down into pros and cons. The pros of grading are that more cells are damaged, more aroma compounds are released, and this means that we can use slightly less truffle for a similar effect as shaved truffles. And then third, you don't need to buy a new tool. The con with grading is that they don't look as good. Now, this sounds very superficial, but remember, sight is an important part of the flavor equation that is often overlooked. And while getting fresh sliced truffles at your table may be a way for them to charge you more for just using more truffle, they also do look a lot better. 
However, for me at home, I think grading is the way to go, and that's what we'll be using to answer questions two and three. Apart from being shaved, another common denominator of using truffles has to do with the timing. And again, you pretty much only see them being used as a garnish that is added right before you eat them. Why exactly? Well, since the aroma compounds are volatile, prolonged exposure to heat, light, and air will cause them to change. And typically, the top and middle aroma notes are the first to disappear. And the idea here is very similar to fresh basil and other herbs, which are usually added right before eating. However, my question is, how different really are they? So for this test, I made one batch of risotto and then split them in two. One, I added the truffles directly to the risotto with Parmesan for about five minutes. The second batch, I added directly before serving. And this is a pretty basic risotto made by sauteing some grated garlic and grated shallot in butter and toasting it along with arborio rice. After letting it toast, I started adding the chicken stock and letting that simmer down while stirring occasionally and adding more chicken stock until the rice was cooked through and the starches had formed that nice creamy sauce. To season this, I added freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano and stirred that in until it was creamy. Lastly, I gave it a taste and added a touch of white wine vinegar for some brightness. Then I split the risotto into two batches. For the cook version, I weighed out 100 grams of the risotto and added it to a separate pan. Meanwhile, I freshly grated two grams of the black truffles before folding it into the risotto and letting that heat through for about five minutes before putting it into two small serving bowls. Additionally, I filled up two equal sized bowls of the basic risotto before adding one gram each of the freshly grated truffle right to the top and mixing them up for a triangle test. I've got a little innovation going on in the taste test now. I've got a little Lazy Susan, and then I also bought kind of a sleeping mask, but I'm very interested to see if there kind of is a difference between cooking it over heat over time versus the super freshly grated and shaved truffle. So let's blindfold up and uh, see what we got here. I haven't had risotto in a while, so I'm also very just excited to eat some risotto. One, two, three. You guys will be able to see whatever this is. I should probably mix these up a little bit at least. Start, wait, start here. Again, these, this is so good, but it's, it's nothing like truffle flavored things that I've had. Earthy, like, it's so hard to describe. Okay, let's go to, let me get a palate cleanser. Okay, back to neutral, number two. So how different were they? Well, on my first bite in a dumb or two, I think I picked up on some fresher earthiness. That one tasted, I don't know if it's different than one, I'll have to go back through. To me, that one tasted a little more earthy fresh, like it was not cooked. Like it has that kind of, dirt's probably the wrong word, but it, in a good way. Number three. However, when I got to the last one, I definitely became a little confused and the flavor here started to run together. Yeah. I don't know really which one's better. I mean, they all taste good. I think one and three are the cooked versions and two is the uncooked. Let's see what we got. Wait, what, what even were these? Oh man, I got these confused. Okay, so two and three were uncooked raw. Maybe the one bite that I got in two was kind of throwing me off a little bit. Number one, definitely a little bit more mellow out. Uh, I'm gonna kind of test these again. See, I think this is the tricky thing with truffles is that if you kind of mix it in well, you probably don't notice as much of a difference. But if you take a bite right off the top when it has been kind of that raw garnish, um, it is gonna be different. So if I was making risotto again, based on this, I think I would probably lean towards using it in the cooked version for at least you know five minutes before it's done, maybe just stirring it in with that Parmigiano Reggiano. It definitely feels more cohesive and rounded out together. Whereas this, I mean, it, it does feel separate. It does feel like fresh truffle on top of good risotto, but they don't meld together as well. And I think risotto might be a very interesting use case for maybe adding some of these other kind of shelf stable products to the cooked version and then finishing it with some fresh shaved truffle. 
Um, that's gonna be something I think we have to test in the second half of this video. Now, before we get to testing fresh truffles versus truffle oil, I have one more question I wanna answer. For this test, I wanted to make a truffle cream sauce pasta, and I asked myself, what is the best tasting amount of fresh truffles to add? So I made three different batches of sauce with different percentages of fresh truffle added. And the best tasting pasta sauce here is the one that I will be comparing to the truffle oil and other truffle products shortly. So for this, I made a truffle butter with 14 grams of fresh truffle and lightly toasted it for just 30 seconds. And this process is going to release the aroma compounds, which are fat soluble into the butter and help distribute them throughout the sauce. I set the truffle butter aside and quickly made the sauce base. For the sauce, I added 150 grams of heavy cream to the pan and brought it to a simmer before stirring in 50 grams of Parmigiano Reggiano. Once melted and creamy so it covers the back of the spoon, I added a little drizzle of white wine vinegar for a touch of brightness, then I separated these out into three equal 50 gram portions of sauce. While this was going on, I also boiled some fettuccine to use for the pasta, and let's assemble. Now, I did mess up my math a little bit here, so technically these are not 2, 5, and 10% truffles. It's actually 7.7%, 3.5%, and 1.89%, but basically I added and mixed together the Alfredo sauce and then slathered in different amounts of that truffle butter, and you can clearly see we have three drastically different amounts of truffle in the pasta, so let's see which one tastes the best. Okay, so we have the 2% truffle sauce, the 5% truffle sauce, and the 10% truffle sauce. And I'm not gonna blindfold up for this one because we're actually gonna recreate this same test and I'll blindfold later on and we'll test it with some of these other options like save truffles, maybe we'll do the truffle paste and the truffle oil, I've gotta see. But what I really wanna do here is just taste them and kinda see what the best mix is because 10% truffles is a lot of truffles to use in pasta, so if one of these other options are pretty good, maybe that's how you can stretch your truffle out to go a little bit further for a dinner party or something like that. So let's go into number one. Also, it might be a hot take. Alfredo with cream is way better than the traditional version that's just butter. I'll say it, that's where I'm at with it. So this one, very good, but you'd have to tell me there's truffle in that. I would just kind of assume that some kind of mushroom, but I wouldn't necessarily say, oh, that's definitely truffle in there. Still good though. Definitely better. If you're looking for that truffle flavor. I was supposed to start like working out more this month, but this truffle video is gonna set me back uh, like a week or so. Very, very good. Nice truffle flavor. This might be the best thing I've eaten with the truffles so far in this video. That's great. Let's go on to number 10, or 10%. Mm. Mm -mm. I was a little questioning if 10% would be maybe too much truffle. I don't, I don't think that's the case. That is ridiculously good. I'm just gonna enjoy myself for a minute here. So for me, I definitely think that 10% is the best and that is a bit of a problem because that's a very expensive pasta to be making. A second thought here though, I think the 5% is a nice happy medium. A whole 10%, if I had like double or triple that amount, I feel like I would kind of get a little sick of it. Maybe that's just an Alfredo thing in general. Um, but 2%, again, I probably wouldn't really mess around with this. It's just not enough. You're not really feel like utilizing the truffle that the flavor that you'd actually want. 10% I think tastes the best. 5% I think is a happy medium. But now let's shift gears and see how these things stack up against truffle products. Now it's time for the penultimate test we've been waiting for. Can you actually taste the difference between truffle substitutes and fresh truffles? So to answer this final question, I made another batch of a cream sauce with fettuccine and did this in three levels. First is fresh white versus fresh black truffle. Secondly, is looking at what is the best tasting truffle substitute. And third, we'll put the best tasting truffle substitute up against the final boss, fresh white truffle. So first, I did a quick test of equal amounts of fresh black winter truffle and fresh white truffle. And as is no surprise, based on what we've talked about with the different aroma compounds, it's easy to pick out the difference. I think that's a black one right off the bat.
That is actually so cool, tasting them side by side. So I think this is black truffle, this is the white truffle. Let's see. So the black truffle, it, it's so much more like earthy and kind of like tobacco-y, umami, much more like kind of subtle and complex on like kind of a middle and base notes type of aromas. Whereas with the white truffle, you do really get that. It's a, it's a, it's a top note freshness that um, is quite different than the, uh, the black truffle, which before doing any of this research, just based off of you know, offhand things I've heard or, or read, I always assumed they were just like basically the same, but they really are quite different. Now, for test number twos, I set up four more bowls of pasta and added four different truffle substitutes as a garnish to stir into the paste. These were one gram drizzle of white truffle oil, a one gram drizzle of black truffle olive oil, a one gram spoonful of truffle paste, and a 0.5 gram sprinkle of the truffle powder. So ultimately, whichever one tastes best here is the one that will go against the final boss of the fresh white truffle. One observation really quickly though, the truffle paste, powder, and the white truffle oil definitely smell the most similar and piercing. The black truffle oil is piercing-ish, but not quite as much, and I think it might be because this is olive oil, not sunflower oil, so the olive oil aromas might be kind of masking the smell of the black truffle oil a little bit. But let's see how these things taste. Remember from earlier, most truffle products with truffle flavoring are actually using the 2,4 dithiapentane, which is in white truffles. For example, this white truffle sunflower oil and truffle olive oil with a black summer truffle piece in it smell very similar, which as we saw in the prior fresh black truffle versus white truffle taste, this is really not the case. So how do these actually taste in a dish? Well, I quickly found out they can be very, very strong. It smells strong. Top note of that like white truffle scent, but feels like there's some underlying bitterness in there that I'm not really a fan of. Ooh. I think I might have already used too much of the truffle substitute. That one, very, very strong. Also, kind of has some hard, like, bitter notes to me. Let's go with number three. That one was definitely not as strong. And because of that, might have been the best tasting one. These first two, I think I added way, way too much. That, those are just too strong. Or one and two. I'm gonna come back to these. Mm -mm. No. One is not good. Not good. Mm -mm. One and two, way too strong, no doubt about it. Kind of makes me a little bit sick. I, you, I think I should have used like a quarter or maybe a tenth of whichever one those two are. Three is solid. It's, aroma, it's like a lighter aroma, but you still get the taste of the Alfredo sauce. One and two are completely drowning out like the Alfredo sauce. Okay, so what do we got here? Truffle paste. Oh, white truffle oil. Yeah, man, that's way too strong. Way too strong. Um, truffle powder and the black truffle oil. Again, even though three of these are black truffle, I'm not getting the black truffles that I got in the prior taste tests. So I'm trying to figure this out in real time for you guys. I think I'm gonna bring forward the white truffle oil and the black truffle oil, and I'm gonna use like a quarter of what I added here, and then we'll compare those two to the fresh white truffle. But I think one of my biggest conclusions here is it is crazy how different concentrations they have of these things. Like in this amount that I added, this is just completely unpleasant. This is borderline unpleasant. And these two, just because they're not as strong, you still get some of that Alfredo sauce with like a hint of the truffle aroma. But none of these were nearly as delicious as the fresh black truffles test that we just did. So after this test, I had two observations. One, these feel less complex than the fresh truffle aroma. And secondly, you gotta be super careful with how much you are using. It's easy to completely overdo it. But now let's put these up against a fresh white truffle. This is a coffee scale, so it does go down to the 10th of a gram. I am literally going to use 0.1 grams of the 
white truffle oil just because it was so strong last time. Right. That is 0.1, that was like six drops of oil, which I can use a little bit more of this. I'm gonna go like 0.4 of this just because it wasn't super strong. This is for there. So, all right. So black truffle oil, 0.4 grams, just because this was a little bit less strong. Literally 0.1 grams, just because that's how strong that white truffle oil was in that first test. And of course, that beautiful smelling white truffle, and similar to vanilla, there's so much more going on in this truffle than just the 2,4 uh, dithia pentane, but that is the strongest top note that you're getting. And yes, I'll probably be able to tell based on texture alone, but again, I'm just trying to see if any of these substitutes, if you can get relatively close to kind of the delicate complexness of a properly fresh truffle. Oh, oh my goodness. Based on smell, I'm thinking number one is probably the white truffle, but we will make a taste. This is the white truffle oil. It's gotta be, it's so obvious. I think that's black truffle oil. All right. I think this is pretty obvious. White truffle oil, black truffle olive oil, fresh white truffle. Fresh white truffle, black truffle olive oil, white truffle oil. So this was pretty easy to tell the difference between them. Again, the white truffle oil is so piercing and kind of one note that you're getting. Um, the black truffle just kind of muted a little bit, which again, I think might be because the aromas of the olive oil are kind of in there. And then the white truffle, Yes, it does have that nice top note that the black, fresh black truffle doesn't, but it still also does have some other complexity going on underneath it, and you can totally taste, it's a completely different experience. These really feel like one note that you're getting. If you're actually trying to recreate a fresh truffle, I don't think they do a good job, but I think these still can be useful in your cooking. Let me explain. So now we have all the information we need to be able to answer the three questions I posed at the beginning of this video. First, are fresh black truffles actually worth it? Well, based on my findings and taste tests with these, yes. I think winter black truffles or tuber melanosporum are worth it, but here's what I would do. I would get two or three friends or family members together to bring your cost to around $15 a person, then don't buy a truffle shaver, use an existing microplane or grater and shave it into a nice pasta. Now remember, these are not gonna smell like you think they should, but they do have a couple of extra benefits over white truffles. First is that they have a longer shelf life. This five day old black truffle that was sliced into it and it looks basically the same and smells very, very similar. However, just a one or two day old white truffle that is sliced into is much more delicate and reactive and way less fragrant. And this brings us to question number two, are the more expensive fresh white truffles worth it? For me, I do not think fresh white truffles are worth it. Don't get me wrong, they are absolutely delicious and super unique, but someone left a comment on a video and asked, if white truffles were as cheap as garlic, would you make a bunch of white truffled flavored things? And for me, that's just a no. I'm sure you are all starting to realize I tend to take a very pragmatic and kind of utilitarian approach with these. And even a small white truffle costs more than like a nice pan from Made In. So it's just hard to really swallow that cost. However, I will say, if you want to try a fresh black or white truffle, I actually think it makes more sense to purchase and use them at home rather than trying to order them out at a restaurant. A restaurant is gonna give you bigger slices and also charge you by weight, where at home you can use the microplane and really get more bang for your buck. And that brings us to question number three, are there any good substitutes for fresh truffles? I'll put it this way. If your goal is to literally try and recreate a fresh white truffle experience in a risotto or pasta, no, I don't think the substitutes work. 
It was so obvious to me which one was which, even when I use such a tiny amount. To me, it's kind of like using fresh basil versus dried. You just miss out on a ton of complexity. However, can truffle oils, paste, and powders be used to create interesting tasting food? To that, I would say yes. Cooking is all personal preference at the end of the day, and in fact, even if you get fresh shaved truffle at a restaurant, there's a good chance they are using a truffle oil or other truffle product in addition. Remember, most of us have essentially trained our nose and brain on the strong aroma in truffle products. And if you got a pure white truffle dish where they only use white truffle, I bet you would be very, very surprised. And you might even ask, hey, did you add enough truffle to this dish? However, when it comes to using truffle products, and I cannot stress this enough, be super, super careful with how much you are adding. I could have added the entire $150 white truffle to the pasta and not been overwhelmed, whereas just a single gram or two of truffle oil can completely overpower a dish. Anyway, we're going to type up a little guide so you can refer to all the key observations and findings in this video rather than having to rewatch this behemoth of a video. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed. I think this is probably going to be my last video of the year. I'm going to take a couple of weeks off and we've got big things coming in 2024. So I will catch you all in the next one. Peace, y'all.